Hello everyone, this is the latest LEGO Marvel Avengers Tower set. They call it Avengers Tower Battle. And at over 14 inches or 36 centimeters tall, not including the uh, antennas, which add more height than they're really worth. This is easily the largest such structure that LEGO has made to date, but it's not as big as it looks right now because it's a little closer to the camera than me. So relative to a human being, yeah, it's not huge but it's sizable. In addition to the main building that you want, this also comes with seven minifigures and a single side build. The building has five floors with plenty of windows all around, so plenty of light gets inside, and it is enclosed from all sides, but will open up in halves, basically, to get you access. But before we open it up, let's take a look just around the outside. This building is obviously a pretty iconic pop culture structure by now, so when you see its overall shape, you immediately know what it's supposed to be. And just in case you don't, well, the Avengers logo is done pretty well there on the side. Dark Azure is the main color on the outside of that. And it doesn't use any special pieces or anything. It's just all genuine build. Though this is, well, it doesn't contain nearly as many floors as the real thing does. I think that Lego did more than a good enough job here of making it seem like a big old building in universe. You can kind of use your mind's eye to magnify this and uh, expand it. I think it works out pretty well. And fortunately, they did make it so that you could get to any of, of the inside spaces and use all the space that is there. So you can use not only this side, but also this side. Starting from the bottom, now we're here in the arc reactor room. This actually has a small action feature built into it, where if you push a button from the outside, you can knock that arc reactor out. So the idea is that there would be some sabotage done through an attack uh, to basically turn the lights out on the whole building. So that's just a little thing that you can do if you want. And you'll see a bunch of consoles and displays uh, throughout this set using just clear backed stickers against trans light blue. There's another one over here. Across from that is a garage room, which is holding uh, Black Widow's Sky Cycle. And we'll take a closer look at the sky cycle itself, but here's what the room looks like just by itself. Above that, well, this is not a very usable space, but you can put some minifigures up here or suits. We'll get back to these later. Uh, just imagine when the building is all together, then they would just be right up against this. This is the armory space. So they've got a bunch of weapons there that are, you know, just on a rack. And there are a couple of extra clips so you can put additional things on here if you want. And you can see behind that, they even have the Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, Gauntlet, it only has a single stone or gem in it right now, but there is another one a floor up. This is referred to as a tech room. So I don't know if that's supposed to be a containment field or a measuring device of some sort, but it looks pretty nice with the use of a few of the accessories from one of Leo's more recent little minifig accessory packs. Just really useful stuff, you know, interesting, odd stuff. And you'll see some weapons in this set that are made from additional parts from that little, little parts pack. Switching back to the other side of the building, this is a jail cell. And it's got, uh, I don't think those are laser beams. I think it's like plasma rods or something that are coming across. This is the little console to turn it on and off. But uh, for us, for easier access, we just lift it up and you put a single minifigure right there in the center. Now you can also put a couple of them, you know, off to the sides, but that's just that. Another floor up, well, this is another case where you're not doing much, at least in the interior space over here. There's a door out to the balcony and landing pad. This has a TV up there and they actually give you an alternate sticker for that tile. I like this, so you can be playing this relevant game there. Everything there makes sense. And this is basically part of just a lounge room, I think is what that's intended to be. So there's a, uh, a game controller there. It's the printed piece from the collectible minifigure series. This time it's Hawkeye who's on hold on the phone, on the video phone. And yeah, these are just basic chairs. You can rotate them around and stuff. And there's not a lot going on in this space. And that brings us up to the top level, which is uh, kind of, uh, completely 100% empty. That's awkward. Plenty of space for so many activities, I guess. But uh, yeah, you got to use your imagination and your own parts 
for that. So that's a bit of a letdown compared to everything else. They do have a little platform for a single minifigure to stand there. Uh, that's not completely necessary to have the extra parts there, whatever. Yeah, see that closes up. There's just nothing going on. It's weird. The very top of the building has just a couple of antennas and a transceiver dish, and that just adds a little height and a little extra detail. With everything closed back up, I want to show you some additional things that you can do for access to the interior. This is really convenient. Down here for the garage, well, you can just open that up, and then uh, Black Widow's Sky Cycle, or whoever wants to ride it, can just fly right on out of there. So, yeah, very convenient not having to open the building up. You know, having it be able to be completely closed up, but still be able to access things in a believable enough manner. I like that. You can also open up this. It's easier to do it when the lower one is open as well to get access there. So that's just a place where you can climb in, you can fly in and get some additional weapons or change out your weapons and then leave. For the jail cell, we don't want people to be able to get in and out easily, but the bad guys do want to be able to get in and out easily. So there's a little action feature here with this little light off to the side that will just blow the doors on out. Uh, there, there we go. Push it in, actually. Blows both of them out. That's kind of cool. I like how they fall apart separately rather than as one. And then finally, just to do a little additional damage to the place, uh, they've got a nicely integrated little destruction, you know, reversible destruction feature for this landing platform. You just pull this beam out. It's nicely camouflaged in. No dramatically different colored parts or anything. And it looks structural, but you pull that out and the platform just falls. So if you have figures there, then the figures will fall. If you have a small vehicle there, the vehicle will fall. You know, it just, it just works. It just makes sense. I like that. The Sky Cycle is an awesome build, I think. Probably the best use of LEGO's motorcycle fairing pieces outside of motorcycles to date. It looks nice. You know, it's got the repulsors, or um, I'm going to call these repulsors because I can't imagine them simply being fans, though in-universe maybe they're supposed to be like turbo fans or maybe they're supposed to be a turbine in the center and then they're gear driven from there, whatever it's supposed to be. Well, I just like it. You can angle these individually. They are a little bit loose in how they attach, though. Uh, these front, I mean, again, look at more of those weapon and minifig accessory pieces being used to good effect. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, this all goes together pretty well. And this brace back here holds the figure on. So even if you invert, you're not going to lose the figure because there are no handlebars to hold on to. She can fly a motorcycle with no handlebars. And yeah, it's just easy to get the figure off if you want. There are just no clips to hold on to extra accessories or anything. So that's, uh, if, if there's anything I could complain about here, it's it's that, you know. She actually, as a figure, comes with two guns. You can place them in the armory, but uh, yeah, you can't put them on her bike. So yeah, that's a miss. Since we were already looking at Black Widow, let's just start our look at the minifigures with her. This is a good Black Widow figure. Lots of good printing, including on the arms. Always nice to see with some metallic printing in there. Uh, the shoulder emblems or pads are not as crisp. Well, once again, that's interesting. Similar to the last one of these that I got in a different set, the right pad is a little bit crisper. It's not perfect, but uh, then the left one. This one's just a little bit blurry by comparison. Maybe these came from the exact same production batch. Your mileage may vary. But again, overall, a pretty good looking figure. She comes with two semi-realistic, semi-automatic pistols there. And the head does have two faces in total. There we go. Got to look at that one. And they seem uh, appropriate enough to me. This form of Marvel's Avengers video game Iron Man suit has the combined leg jet booster thing, kind of like they did with the, uh, the Mark 50 in Infinity War. And I think that Lego has done a decent enough job of making that work. However, good luck getting him to stand. He technically can balance just on that little uh, little single one by one cone there at the base, but it's best to attach him to a studded base if you want him to actually be stable. Otherwise, just take him off from all of this and use him as a regular figure, which of course you can do to represent the more normal mode. Taking this off, they just reused the MCU face set again, the most recent one, which also has the 
heads-up display overlay between the camera and his face. This set introduces to the world these taser and blazer variants of Iron Man armor, which are also capable of autonomous operation, so they can just fly around and act on their own. Thus, they don't need to have heads underneath. They just have clear pieces, because they're not actually manned right now. You can just put Tony Stark's face on there if you want. Figured I'd show them both together, because they kind of work, I'm assuming, as a pair, as a team. It's kind of how they've they've shown it, but maybe not. But I like all the accessories that are attached to them. Obviously, a lot of electrical abilities would come from Taser. I mean, think of the name, and then, well, Blazer, he's all about the fire. So more accessories used there to give us blast and splat kind of energy effects, and it's cool. The set comes with a pair of disposable aim agents, just as your general run-of-the-mill cannon fodder bad guys. This one on the right has something attached to his chest. Now the torso print is identical underneath, so just look at the one on the left for the torso print. This is just a long chain. I'm assuming it's, I'm assuming it's energized in some way, and it's got this grappling hook at the end of it, so he can attach himself to the Avengers Tower building. Uh, both of these have built-up weapons, which look pretty cool again, using parts from that accessory set. And uh, yeah, to good effect, you know, again, I've said this many times, I really like it when you build up accessories that are appropriately sized for minifigs using smaller pieces that can in turn be used for even other things. Underneath here, there's no alternate face, so that's just it. You have seen it all. And here's Red Skull. And he gets a pretty nicely built up weapon there. They call it a rocket launcher. Makes sense. I like the little angle to it and the fact that it'll actually launch stuff. And again, it's appropriately scaled to the figure, I think. And, uh, you know, it goes right up to the, the shoulder pretty well. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. The figure itself is fine. You know, just has a little bit of print for the torso. I like the metallic bits, but the rest is, you know, so-so. Face is cool. Sorry, I got that little bit of glare on there, but there we go. See it a little bit better. And nothing around the back, just a little bit of torso print. You know, the face doesn't get anything, well, the head doesn't get anything additional because it doesn't need it, but that's that. I think overall, the, uh, the weapon just steals the show here. Lots of leftover pieces here, including some valuable stuff like the remainders of the sprues for the two colors of Infinity Stones. That is a hairpiece for Tony Stark. Always nice to get a hairpiece for a helmeted uh, character or a helmeted figure. Uh, these are just additional projectiles for Red Skull's rocket launcher. Leftover piece from that accessory part kit. A couple of energy uh, effect, energy blast items. Uh, notice the black colored uh, binoculars there. It's not a common color for that. Just, yeah, good stuff. And finally, sticker sheet for this set. It's clear backed. So that just gives you an idea of how many stickers were included. Not too many of them, but in many of the places I do wish that they had included two sticker sheets instead, one clear backed and one not. Let's give some consideration to value here. This set comes with less than 700 pieces and it costs $90 US. So the price to part ratio isn't fantastic on paper, but you do have to consider the fact that this does come with a large number of large pieces. All those big windows, those are worth more than a one by one plate or a one by one round tile to be sure. And there's a fair number of figures and they're fair figures at that. They're not particularly bad figures or weak figures. Uh, I personally like the Taser one, probably the least as a figure, but it's an interesting character, I think, or character accessory, I suppose. The aim agents, yeah, they keep making more of the, the same aim agents for this game, but at least the accessories are different and interesting. They're making them more interesting than they need to be. And ultimately, you know, think of them, I, I've seen a lot of negative feedback about these and I've shared some myself, just how they keep being the same. You know, the figures themselves are the same, but think of them as stormtroopers. You wanna have plenty of them. They are just general foot soldiers and uh, they're intended to be massable. So that's why they keep creating more of them. So I don't feel like even I uh, should be pooing on those or the inclusion of lots of those too much. 
uh, even though they are identical, they're supposed to be. It's the way it's supposed to be. The accessories are really cool. How they did Red Skull's uh, rocket launcher there, very nice. And using some of those extra pieces from that parts pack for the rotors, or the thrusters, whatever they are, for the sky cycle, that's really nice. And, but of course, the main thing that we're paying for here is the building, and it's sizable. You know, nice height, nice depth. The width is, is okay. I mean, the shaping is pretty proper. Uh, the way that it opens up is right, it's righteous. And I feel like this is just bonus back here, being able to access it from the back. Uh, you can all, you can even see the the jail breakout function as just a way to get access to that. Not even in in a, you know, a, a breakout play pattern, just to put somebody in there without opening the building up and then just close it back up. I think you know, it's easy enough to do that. Uh, the way that this platform collapse function works is just fine. You know, it adds without detracting. There's no big red knob on the side. Uh, they even use the black colored Technic uh, axle piece, the short Technic axle piece. So no complaints there. Uh, the worst thing about this entire set is that the top floor is bare. They could have made up something to put there. Just, just something just to break the monotony of it. Otherwise, this, the design work that was done here, I think is, is really, really good. And I think that has value. You know, this set could have had the exact same volume of stuff, the exact same weight of plastic, and it could have been not as good, easily. So I, th I think some, some consideration has to be given when thinking about value to just how good the thing is for what's actually there. I'm pretty happy with this. Yeah, no major, I mean, it displays well and it plays well. It's kind of all you can ask for. Level of detail in the interior, nice. Access to the interior is good. So good job to the designer again. And uh, I'd still wish it was just a little bit cheaper. Check out the build if you'd like to. The pure build should be up by now in real time. And also you'll be seeing a speed build show up on the Jang Builds It channel. Links to those two channels in the video description and also the end screen. Thanks for watching. Hope that uh, this was useful for you in some way, and I'll talk to you again soon.